Hello and welcome back to these videos on Picket Robot Vision Made Easy. In the past videos, we have explained step by step what needs to be done to get to the point where Picket is able to detect objects and have pick points that are ready to be sent to the robot. This video will focus on the integration between Picket and the robot. Picket integrates seamlessly with most existing robot brands. But in this particular video, we will focus on the integration with Universal Robots. Picket is part of the UR Plus ecosystem, and as such, we provide a Picket UR Cap plugin. This plugin is for performing vision guided pick and place applications with minimal programming effort. And as such, the way in which you specify application knowledge should be intuitive. And at the same time, the complexity that is needed to robustly execute a pick and place application should be hidden for you. So the way the robot program looks like is like this. There's basically a main pick and place node from which actions like object detection, pick and place hang. Now, in order to compare or have an idea of the complexity of the robot program that comes out of the Picket UR cap, I would like to compare it with a hard automation solution, which is the most trivial example that I can think of. Because when you use hard automation, you have a fixed pick point, so the robot can go blindly and pick, and the complexity is actually hidden by the hardware. So if we take a look at the inputs that we would need for such a robot program, we need three waypoints and the grouper actions for grasping at the pick point and releasing at the drop off. And these three waypoints are the pick, which is fixed. As we were saying before, the hardware hides the picking complexity. There's also the drop off. And both pick and drop off, I consider it to be application knowledge. And then there's one waypoint, which is overhead, which we called above pick area, whose purpose is to produce collision-free motions between, between pick and drop-off. Now, if we do the same exercise with the picket UR cap, we now have the, that the robot program is no longer trivial, but it is easy and simple. And as opposed to hard automation, the complexity is now hidden by software instead of by hardware. If we look at the inputs that we would need, we still have three waypoints. We still have the grasp and release gripper actions, but now we have a picket configuration, which is additional that we have to input. And in fact, if we also look at the three waypoints, we see that instead of specifying now a fixed pick point, what we specify is a detect point, which is where the robot should be while the camera is capturing an image. So the main differences between hard automation and the picket UR cap for a pick and place application would be basically that fixed pick is replaced by detect and that we additionally have to provide a picket configuration from which the pick point, which is now variable and dynamic, is computed. And not only that, but also pre-pick and post-pick points which are used to generate the approach and the retreat trajectories. So what does the Picket UR Cap plugin offer? It offers in the first place, the functionality to connect to a Picket system. And if you don't know exactly which is your system, you can automatically detect it. Uh, it allows you to perform robot camera calibration along with Picket. And this is something that you should always execute you should have a valid calibration before any pick and place program. Basically calibration, what it does is that it lets Picket know where the robot is with respect to the camera, such that when we send pick points to the robot, they are expressed in the robot base frame, which is what the robot expects. And then finally, the plugin exposes the pick and place template, which is what we would actually use to do a pick and place uh, program. So right now, we will switch to the Picket user interface. And at this point, we have object detection running successfully on the bin. It's de detecting these power sockets. 
And we see here at the top status bar that it indicates that we don't have a robot connection. So right now, Picket is not aware of the robot that is sitting next to it. So if we now switch to the Polyscope user interface to the robot, and we go to the installation screen, your cap, we can go here to Picket and then click Find Connected Picket Systems. We get a confirmation that we are now connected to Picket. And in fact, if we go back to the Picket user interface, we see that we now have a check mark and it says the robot is connected. Also, we can see that we have a 3D rendering of the robot, which gets updated in real time. So if I now, for instance, free drive the robot, we can see how that moves in the Picket user interface. And this is very helpful for monitoring. So we go back to uh, Polyscope and we set to create our own pick and place program. By heading to your caps, there's an entry that says Picket Pick and Place. This is what we want. We click on it. And then the first thing that we get prompted with is two very simple questions that relate to your application. The first question says, are the objects overlapping? Which in our case, they are. So we keep yes as answer. And then it asks what type of gripper will be used. Is it suction or similar, where we enable the gripper before we approach? Or is it finger-like, where we actually approach first and then enable the gripper? There is also an advanced configuration, which I'm not going to go into details right now, but power, user, power users have a lot of flexibility in terms of specifying with uh, fine detail uh, the behavior of the pick and place application. So once we are done, we click and then we wait for the uh, template to initialize. I will collapse the tree that is inserted so that such that we can see the high level nodes. So we see that we have a top level pick and place node with object detection, pick place, and then a final uh, sequence that is optional and we will see what it does. So at the top level, we have pick and place where we can monitor the 2D image of the picket camera. We can also go back to the configuration in case we want to change something either here or in the advanced configuration. And we also have access to a help screen that gives us some information on the different waypoints that are involved in the, in the pick and place application. Now, if we expand object detection, this is a sequence that moves the robot to the detect point and triggers uh, Picket to detect objects. So the first thing that we would have to set as input here is the detect waypoint, which the main thing that it has to comply with is to not be in the field of view of the camera. And here should be okay. We also click here on the Find Object node. And this is the place where we specify which picket configuration we want to use. So in this case, we have a configuration for our sockets, which we will select. And now we can see that the Object Detection node has become white. We no longer have inputs to specify. The pick sequence is basically moving first to a waypoint which is above the pick area. It will perform the pick sequence and then go back here. So the first waypoint that we need to specify is called above pick area. So we will move above the pick area. We set this. And then the other input that we need here is what should be done when we grasp the object. And for this, we will use the UR cap of the gripper that we have. We know from previous testing that 82% is a good number for this. Oops.
okay? And we are not going to change the defaults, but when we do the approach and retreat motions, there are different strategies supported by this template. So for instance, for retreating, the post big point, you can choose from any of these four different strategies and also set a particular offset. But for now, this is good enough for what we need. So we, we will not modify it. So the pick sequence is done. And then for the play sequence, we need to specify a drop-off point, which will be down here. And we also need to specify the tool action for releasing the part. For opening, we will use these values. We save. And now our program is fully specified, everything is white. The action after end, what it does is that when no more pickable objects are found, it will report in a pop-up the reason. It will say the region of interest is empty, or I found some objects, but they are unreachable, or uh, there is something there, but it's not what I'm looking for. You can override this implementation. I we add it by default there because it's really useful for debugging when you initially set it up. So we are now good to go. And before running the application, there's one thing on the Picket side that you should know of, which is the, the robot mode. Picket has this button called Enable Robot Mode, which what it does is that it forbids you from changing the Picket configuration while the robot is supposed to be using the robot. And this is for safety purposes. So Picket should always be in robot mode um, before running a program. But even if it's not, this can be enabled from the robot side. I will play the program. When Picket is not in robot mode and you play, you get a pop-up that says, Picket is not in robot mode. And if we continue, we will trigger enabling robot mode. So now Picket should be already in robot mode. And then we start. We can actually monitor from the Picket side how the program gets executed. For instance, here we see the pick point with the tool where the robot should head. And we can inspect all detections that are available at this moment. <laughs> 